Good afternoon. Welcome to the holiday edition of the Weekly Livestock Market Update. I'm Brownfield Anchor Reporter Megan Grebner. With us is University of Missouri Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. We're talking a couple of days early. We had a big day of reports today, but Thanksgiving holiday is on Thursday and uh, markets will be pretty quiet on Friday. So we're starting our discussion a little early. Uh, as we look at the markets through Wednesday of this week, talk to me a little bit about how things uh, fared. Yeah, so it is early in the week, but as we kind of start on the cattle side of the equation, it looks like uh, we're going to find a week this week where cash fed cattle are going to be higher right now. It, it seems firm to higher when we look at some of the early information that's available to us. A lot of those feeder cattle auctions this week are also uh, either talking about uh, much lower runs or, or closed, but the little bit of information that's out so far this week would suggest at least those feeder cattle markets uh, have started the week on the firmer side. If we look at uh, the future side, uh, that uh, December live cattle futures contract is up a little more than 60 cents this week thus far, and the uh, January feeder cattle contract uh, is up $1.15. The choice box beef price really has been unchanged as we've been in the early part of this week uh, with just a, a modest decline uh, through Wednesday. If we switch gears and look at the hog side, uh, barrel and gilt prices I will call uh, basically unchanged for the week, down slightly. Uh, while that December lean hog futures contract was down nearly $1.50. Uh, the pork cutout value continues to fall again this week. We're down uh, $2.34. Um, that, that's 14 or almost 15 cents below where we were a year ago at this time. So but much lower pork cutout value, uh, really led by this week lower belly prices. We ended up with belly prices back below a dollar for the first time in, in uh, several weeks now. It really has been a tough week uh, on the pork values and, and looking at all of those different uh, primals, especially uh, th there is what tough a tough week in the picnics and we saw some bounce back uh, through midday today today. But uh, when we look at that, what's causing this massive drop uh, on the wholesale value side of things? Yeah, I think we're really seeing the, the repercussions of what are really big runs of hogs and really big runs of production. Uh, weekly pork production last week set an all-time record again at 555 million pounds. Uh, you, you put those kind of supplies on the marketplace and, and you certainly find, I think, what's been happening in terms of uh, that pork cutout value going lower. So that, that's really driving, I think, short term where these markets are at with these kinds of large runs that we're seeing here late uh, late in the year. And, and, and we really expected we would be here at this point in time. So don't want to suggest those are larger than we expected, but uh, it is it is record production that's sitting out there. Do we also get into a little bit of um, uncertainty with demand, knowing we have these massively large runs of, of hogs right now, but we're still struggling with the tariff game with, with Mexico and with China, and then you throw in African swine fever into that as well. Is there kind of just a mixed bag of emotions when it comes to the markets? Well, I certainly think you, we, we all know the supply side of that market is, is certainly uh, pressuring prices lower. And I think for uh, the last few weeks, we've seen a little bit of strength coming from some potential positives on the demand side. But uh, boy, these current markets uh, are, are really paying attention to just the, the sheer amount of pork that's being brought to the marketplace. So it, it does add to the uncertainty. Um, uh, however, I'll say just given the large runs that we have had, uh, I'll continue to say it's amazing uh, the kind of price strength that we might actually have at these kinds of runs. All right, let's talk a little uh, cattle on feed, a big week for reports. As we take a look at those numbers, really kind of a positive report overall uh, for the cattle sector. Cattle producers got their Thanksgiving dinner early uh, to today with the release of uh, cattle on feed report. Um, so if we look at the data that we got, number uh, number one, we ended up with uh, placements for October coming in uh, down a little more than 6% uh, relative to a year ago. That did fall slightly outside the bottom end of the range. So we had a 94 to 104.3 range on placements for October. So we fell a little bit outside the, the, the bottom end. I think you and I've talked multiple times already about whether or not we were pulling some lightweight calves uh, off of pastures earlier. This report to me certainly suggests that uh, is, is a continuing trend that we see. 
that might actually spell really positive news for us as we continue to move into 2019, uh, if, if we continue the trend that we've seen of late. Uh, even on feed, so on feed as of uh, November 1st came in at 103.2, so up 3.2%. Yet that was also outside the range of pre report estimates. Uh, that, was, that range was 103.3 to 105.6. Uh, all of that looks really good. When you look at the, the placements by weight category, uh, we got a lot of the reduction in the, the under 800 pound category. Uh, uh, in, in terms of what we place. So all really quite positive news relative to what we might anticipate. And it kind of continues what's been a little bit of slowdown in the growth of production, maybe relative to what we would have thought uh, when we started 2018. We talked a little bit about the those calves being pulled forward. Uh, weather related uh, a lot of it, but how do producers maybe take crunch all those numbers and make their preparations for 2019 when they're looking ahead to potential shorter cattle supplies. Yeah. So I, I remind us, number one, I mean, don't forget we're, we're still higher, uh, you know, with, with, uh, overall, uh, cattle on feed setting up, uh, uh, 3.2% uh, uh, for, for November. So I don't want us to forget where we, where we sit. So I still worry about some of that downside risk that sits there in the marketplace. Um, but, but I will say, uh, I, I think folks do want to pay attention to what they're doing in terms of herds as we move forward. Uh, we, we've seen, by, by large, positive news on the trade side. And now all of a sudden, if the supply side's not growing quite as much as we would have thought, one could be a little more optimistic in 2019. Um, certainly, we want to take advantage of, of uh, futures markets uh, that, that might run up at times to give us a chance to lock in some of those higher prices. Uh, just just a a, a much better situation than we would have thought under normal kinds of, uh, of, of supply increases like we've seen this year. Let's talk a little livestock slaughter as we're talking about supply increases, a big month of uh, meat production in October. Yeah, absolutely. So 4.9 billion pounds of red meat uh, in October, record level uh, monthly production. Um, I, I sound like a broken record when we talk about uh, the, these numbers, but beef production uh, year to date up 3.2 percent, uh, pork production up 3 percent. So we continue to talk about another year of, of pretty substantial growth. Again, we've curbed on those growth rates a little bit as we've gone through 2018. Um, I, I think you can look at the cattle side here for a minute. Beef cow slaughter up nearly 11 percent. Just continues to remind me that you know, maybe when we get that cow cow count here at the end of January, uh, we'll, we'll at least be flat in terms of uh, beef cow inventory. But uh, a lot of red meat uh, in, in the marketplace in October. That sets us up for cold storage and to talk a little bit about where that red meat is going. Are we surprised to see the cold storage numbers knowing that that much meat is being produced here in the U.S.? I am surprised, and I think it just is a good indicator of how good demand's been uh, when, when you see what we got out of cold storage uh, today as well. So for uh, the second consecutive month, so in October, we were down 1.3% in red meat freezer supplies. Uh, you have to remember back in May, uh, Megan, we were setting up 9.6%. So we, we've changed a lot here as we've gone through uh, the, the, the months this year. Um, Pork bellies, you know, we, we, you and I like to talk pork bellies on a regular basis, basis, but for the first time in 13 months, pork belly uh, freezer stocks fell below year ago levels, down 17%. Uh, Ham stocks down 9.8%. Uh, sometimes we, when we talk about trade, we'll talk about hams to Mexico. It's amazing that we can continue to talk about fewer ham supplies in freezers, yet uh, we know we have still tariffs going to Mexico that, that create problems for us. Uh, even on the beef side, so beef, total beef freezer supplies were up 1.6% in October. That's the lowest increase we've seen since March of this year where we were flat. Um, on, on the beef side in particular, we were up 12% uh, as, as uh, a few months ago as July. So it's been a big change in, in those as well. So from a freezer supply standpoint, we open the door and don't find nearly as many as maybe we would have thought. Even on the poultry side, we've talked about the, the overhang of poultry supplies on markets as well. 
total poultry freezer supplies up just uh, not quite 4%. Um, that's uh, in stark contrast to being up nearly 10% in September. Uh, chicken uh, freezer stocks up 8%. Uh, if you remember, we were up over 18% just in August. So uh, we're seeing the, the chicken industry get uh, freezer supplies in much better shape with this report as well. I'm going to ask probably an odd question. Maybe it's not an odd question. We talk about uh, consumers going to the grocery store and seeing prices of meat at the meat counter. Are, is it because of the economy that poultry, even though it's priced so much more competitively uh, than maybe beef and pork, consumers are still grabbing beef and pork? So I do think those products aren't as good of substitutes as we would have thought of in the past. And, and I will say, so where you and I might still go to the meat case on a regular basis, and we'll look at uh, relative cuts of meat, meat and making that uh, choice of whether we want beef or pork or chicken. So many of us today don't find ourselves in front of the meat case very often. We're just going out to the restaurant to decide what to consume. And there's where I think you find menus that are slow to change. Um, I, I was recently at, at a meeting where I said, you know, if you want a really, and, and this was a meeting of pork producers. So I said, if you want a really good meal, you know, what are you going to go get? And immediately all of them said steak. Uh, I, I made them laugh by saying, uh, you know, you are pork producers. You should have said a good cut of pork, I think, but they didn't. But, but it just reminds us that I think our away from home consumption uh, is, is so much more important to this idea of how beef and pork and chicken substitute for each other. And too many of, of those menus don't change very often just because of relative prices. It's what those restaurants want to feature. It'll be interesting to see uh, maybe as we get into the new year or as we keep going, it, as we see these, these stocks of poultry and, and needing to move it, if we start to see some changes. So you do worry at some point that you throw the anchor out of the the back of the boat for, for beef and pork demand with what's been cheaper chicken products. And so I don't want to discount that can't happen, um, especially when you realize we've had some record low chicken prices here in 2018. Uh, at, at some point, you you might very well see some switching and, and that could be uh, potentially troubling from a demand standpoint here in the U.S. at least. Scott, as we wrap things up this week, uh, looking ahead to next week's reports. Yeah, so not a lot again next week. A uh, little bit of focus on the demand side. We had a restaurant performance index out on Friday. Uh, and, and another report I'm really interested in seeing is ERS is going to give us a farm income estimate uh, update here next week as well. We'll just kind of get a little better uh, look at what's happening on the financial side of, of production agriculture. All right. We look forward to having those discussions. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll talk to you next Friday. You do the same, Megan. Thank you. To have our weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every Saturday morning, visit our website, brownfieldagnews.com. You can click subscribe and also submit questions and comments there as well. And for market updates twice daily, make sure to check out John Perkins' Market Minute. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll talk to you next Friday. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.